Well, joining us now is Aritzia Lutsevich. She is a research fellow at the Chatham House. Uh, thanks for being with us. As we just saw there in that report, every day Ukrainians are joining in the fight against the Russians. Do you think they're viewing this as an uphill battle and that a Russian occupation is inevitable? We were looking from the, uh, for the numbers of uh, uh, expressed resistance way before the aggression. And we have seen that public opinion was showing very strong resolve to resist. What happened throughout the 10 days of this war is that Ukrainians tarnished this image of invincible Russian army and has really received quite a lot of confidence in what Ukrainian armed forces jointly with the population are able to uh, achieve. And each, like your um, reporting shows, is doing their duty. Uh, volunteers are helping with humanitarian, with IDPs, uh, assisting the army, private sector. Everybody is mobilized. So it's a real patriotic war where Zelensky is heading a nation into resistance. Well, so what are the different, different scenarios here? For example, could Russia just take over parts of Ukraine and, and other regions would remain independent? Well, to this point, if we follow what Putin says, he still insists on his uh, quite uh, high-stakes goals to take Kyiv. And uh, the, the, whether he will be able to achieve it or not, we'll see it on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. He is not backtracking, and we hear from American intelligence that he is up to take whole of Ukraine. I also know that there are no uh, sign signals that Russia is willing to de-escalate. And the NATO Secretary General said the coming days of war will be nastier. Well, we saw today the destruction of the airport in, in Venezia. What impact will that have on both Ukraine's defense and the refugees trying to escape? This is a, a civilian or this was a civilian airport. Ukrainian airspace is completely closed for civilian um, aviation. The only routes out of besieged cities is railway, which is still functioning, and also uh, ground transportation. Uh, International Committee of Red Cross confirmed that over 200,000 people ready to evacuate cannot because there's a, there's a violation along the route and the Mariupol is directly shelled. The airport in Vinnytsia is not far from Kyiv. They shelled it to prevent any uh, supply of munitions and humanitarian assistance directly to the capital. And we see this repeatedly, airstrikes on airports in Zhytomyr, in Uman, and other places. So Vladimir Putin, it seems that he's essentially trying to destroy a country that he wants to occupy. So what's the end game here? He tries to destroy the country that he declares he is liberating, and he is outright lying to the Russian people about some kind of a special operation, you know, uh, to liberate Ukraine from Ukraine. So far, his end game is, I think, to take control over Ukraine, to salami slice it into some kind of a federal regions, and reconstitute new Ukraine. This is a sick dystopia, to be honest, because this plan will never work out because of that exactly resistance we have discussed. From women to volunteers to armed forces, Ukrainians are not ready to surrender and succumb to this scenario. But how long can that resistance stand up to, to the Russian military? We're talking about one of the, the strongest military forces in the world. Well, this is one of the things that this is no more the strongest uh, military force in the world. We see that e Russians cannot even take control of Ukrainian airspace, and Putin is already saber-rattling nuclear option and sending, honestly, 400 assassins to kill what he believes is a comedian. So that, that is a bit of a, uh, you know, overestimation. And every day Ukraine resists, there is more capacity because Ukrainian army is reforming, let's remember. They are a lot of volunteers joining the armed forces, and they are also learning on the go how to defeat the Russians. So is this the Russian strategy, you know, to move into the capital, Kyiv, maybe even assassinate President Zelensky and then install some kind of puppet government? 
That is exactly what intelligence is telling us, U.S. intelligence, U.K. intelligence. They were warning about this scenario. This is Putin's playbook, but at this point, uh, he will still try to exercise that scenario. But it's clear that the current military strategy that he deploys is not working into making this uh, possible because of that resistance and success of Ukrainian armed forces. Of course, President Zelensky um, has had offers by the U.S. You know, to be escorted out of the country. He's refusing to do that. He's still in the country. What role do you think he has had in inspiring the Ukrainian people to fight back? Well, Zelensky clearly shows that he is fighting alongside Ukrainians. And I think we, we've seen an incredible transformation of a political you know, leader into a leader of the nation. That was a watershed moment for many. Uh, because, honestly, there were fears that he will flee, that it's too overpowering to stand up to, uh, to such threat. But he clearly said, the fight is in here. I don't need the airlift. I need munitions. And this is what Ukrainian top political leadership is working uh, in the security and military and diplomatic front to make sure that Ukrainians have enough munitions to defend themselves. How long do you think this, this conflict could go on? I think it will depend on two things. On one thing, it will depend on how effective is the West, uh, countries like Germany, France, EU, uh, United States, in honestly crippling Putin's regime and making sure his strategy fails. Because it's not just about Putin. Russian top leadership must understand that this kind of revisionist history is doomed to fail. And also, it will depend on Ukraine's own resistance. The West will help Ukraine to fight. But Ukrainians already show courage and they will resist. So we are here in the, you know, it's hard to make any predictions. The next week will be crucial to see what kind of military strategy Russia deploys. But it's not a free ride. It's not blitzkrieg. And Russian economy is crippling. Look at the cost of Russian aggression to Russian people, Russian elite. It's immense. This has never happened uh, in Russian modern history. Despite those costs to Russia in terms of the economy and, and these sanctions, do you think that Putin has ambitions beyond Ukraine? Putin has declared some ambitions beyond Ukraine in those security demands in December. He said he wants a pull out of U American infrastructure, nuclear, anything that has to do with new NATO members, such as Romania, Poland. He honestly believes that his sphere of influence is also what used to be Warsaw Pact. He is threatening directly Sweden in uh, increased military activity in the Northern Sea, uh, you know, violating Swedish um, airspace. Yes, he has uh, definitely um, aims beyond Ukraine. Okay, some really good insight there. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Aritzia Lutsevich.